Lamar Aismo with another uh, video. This will be the final one for today. Uh, and today's date, I believe it's the 9th of January, 2019. Uh, we were talking about the Middle East, and I just thought of something I seen weeks ago on uh, Israeli television. If you, um, the, if, depending on who your um, cable provider or you know satellite TV provider is, uh, you there's actually an Israeli a 24-hour Israeli news channel. So I like to um, watch what the opposition is doing every now and then, uh, get gather information from a variety of sources. And to be honest, their, their media is pretty good because they're a lot more honest than our media is. Americans should actually watch Israeli uh, English speaking news more so than uh, CNN, Fox, any of the other stuff because um, you get to hear what's really you know. The, the, the gloves come off. All the euphemisms disappear because um, in Israel, they don't mind being um, speaking in terms of real politic on their uh, channel, on their on their uh, yeah, t- television channels. And their their pundits don't pull any punches and they 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 get down to um, what what Israel really wants and how they feel about others. But um, one of their uh, pundits actually said. Um, Iran was a big threat and they were worried. He said they should really worry about Iran because he said Iran was similar to their society. He said there is a, um, a very a highly educated population, which is true. And um, educated, innovative, um, nationalistic, uh, et cetera, which is actually true, which is why for, and see, this is where your Brendan O'Connell's, and your crazy right wing alternative media types always get it wrong. Iran, North Korea, and Cuba are the last three dominoes that have to fall before the Rothschilds have a bank in every single country in the world. Iran, actually, unlike your favorite president, uh, alt right maniacs, uh, unlike your favorite president, Iran actually does play 3D chess. Iran is essentially surrounded by enemies. And in, in in, in they have to deal with a global economy that's actually set up against them. There's draconian sanctions on Iran. So they have to do things in order to feed their population, to build their infrastructure. They have to take losses, and they, they really have to strategize in order to come out uh, on top. But definitely even to break even. They, they have to strategize to break even. And... Silly people like Brendan O'Connell who try to paint a narrative as if Iran is in league with um, the Jewish state and the Jewish supremacists is is so foolish uh, because if that were the case, their scientists wouldn't be getting killed by uh, Jewish intelligence agencies and they wouldn't be on the hit list. The the, uh, the United States mainstream media wouldn't throw Iran on their bus every chance it got, and it wouldn't advocate for going against Iran's policies as forceful as it does if Iran was in league with uh, the Jewish state. Now, conversely, look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is one of the worst. If you want to talk about human rights, it's probably the worst state in the world. It's racist. Uh, they treat uh, their uh, imported labor from the third world like utter garbage. Don't believe me. Any search engine put in um, racial abuse in Saudi Arabia or abused migrant workers, workers from around the world, whether it be Bangladesh uh, or anywhere else on the Indian subcontinent, from Asia, they've abused Filipinos, Indonesians, uh, Africans, to the extent that countries, once countries wise up to what's going on to their citizens, in these um, Gulf Salafi Wahhabi monarchies, they usually ban their citizens from going there. So, and we all know that the the mainstream media here in the United States, most of the owners of each one of those major stations or conglomerates is Jewish. Uh, if if Iran was in league with them, they would be uh, they wouldn't be demonizing Iran because uh, in comparison to Saudi Arabia. Iran's record is a lot better, but 
Brendan O'Connell won't tell you that he'll say um, Iran and then he'll go off on tangents about China being um, a linchpin for the Zionists or Russia for that matter. But Russia and China are in the same predicament as the United States because they're the um, we're, we're Rothschild's hammer here in the United States. But Russia and China uh, it, in the case of Russia, they're the anvil, and China is not too far behind. The Israelis are heavily infiltrating their society as we speak. Uh, Evelyn de Rothschild uh, is actually based in uh, China. Uh, he's on. He appears on their television stations talking crap about um, the bogus stock market and that that sort of shit. Oh, excuse me. I, but the stock market, all these financial scams and gimmicks, really get under my skin. Uh, but so, I mean, O'Connell and people like him are really counterproductive when, when it comes to this truth movement, because again, what Iran and the same thing goes for Cuba, what they have to do is walk a delicate line to keep the Rothschild bank out, but yet still try to do some sort of trade with the outside world to get in the products that they can't produce themselves or things that, that people want and need. They have to tow a line, tow the line to a degree, but they still try to um, have maneuvering room to, you know, to do their policies, which is why uh, Mike Pompeo, uh, one of the swamp monsters that uh, Trump uh, you know, did, not, not only did DJ Chump not drain the swamp, he actually threw in a few more possums, gators, rats, it's, et cetera. He actually enhanced the swamp, but Pompeo is actually saying they're going to double down on their sabotage against Iran. So Mr. O'Connell, uh, Iran's the bad guy. Why, why is uh, your uh, uh, president DJ Chump? And, and, and I saw O'Connell's video entitled um, something to the effect of Mattis is uh, doesn't like Israel. That's total Mattis. Mad Dog Mattis and any other big shot like Big Wig that you can't reach the rank that he did without no without not basically you can't reach his rank not knowing how the system works and not being in favor of it. You don't get to become a general, a joint chief of staff, or anything of that nature, and unless you know that you know the gimmick and you're okay with it. They don't they don't leave that sort of stuff to chance. Any sort of military. A top brass with a conscience that actually is pro-American. That doesn't happen. So that that right there should indicate anybody who watches O'Connell should know um, he's um, to me he seems un unhinged. Uh, you know he he has flashes just like uh, just like so many others in the um, alt right of the alternative media, like Ron Paul. Uh, you know he has flashes of brilliance, but then when it's when you get to his solutions, uh, you know, it leaves a lot to be desired. Um, but I think that's a safe place to conclude it. Well, well, I got a few minutes. We'll just talk more about, um, I guess we'll go back into the tribe and how in their media, if you look at the, the tribe's media, it could be Haaretz or the Jerusalem Post. Occasionally they slip and say things that they shouldn't say. Like, they'll actually tell you, yeah, we control the media, we control Hollywood. We, They'll say this stuff, and then it'll get censored later. But, um, again, but you know, that's part of the reason for their success, because they actually do control these institutions, and when people speak out, it gets censored. People get whacked. Um, there's no way James Trafficant uh, you know, died in a tractor accident. It's just, it's just really scary stuff at times to people. But um, that's why my solution, I have actually, re unlike Brendan O'Connell, I'm not going to tell you to, to try to um, red pill some low-level military personnel or to red pill your congressman because that's not going to do any good. What I advocate is average people learning what's, learn to learn what's really going on in the world, form small groups, non-violent groups, non-riotous, none of that's going to help. But to form small groups and pretty much figure out how to poke holes in the matrix and just, just to say, you know, enough is enough. Because if enough people if, at the grassroots level, if, you know, actually know what's really happening and we don't go along, perhaps we could on a bigger level 
basically uh, gum up the works to the point where they can't, uh, this system, we, if, if more people actually did become red pilled in the right way, we could actually put a stop to most of this uh, sinister activity by the new world order. Cause a lot of it is dependent on people just going along to get along. But if, if people just got pissed off and stop going along to get along, we have national sit-ins, you know, everybody, everybody going on strike or a critical mass of people, Go on strike at once, and we just say, hey, the jig is up. We're not playing along. We don't want to sponsor an Israeli genocide against the Palestinians, and we don't want to sponsor them getting a bunch of free money from the rest of the world so they can rule the world. We we actually want them out. We don't want their lobbies. We don't want them to influence our politics anymore. They won't be able to pull it off. And, wow, there was a point that I was going to make uh, since I was on the road. It was escaping me. It's escaping me now. But, yeah, we don't. We don't want their, uh, for, for the most part, we don't want their system. And the, the, the trouble is you just have too many people that uh, go along to get along. And as long as that's the case, the, the new world order, the powers that be are going to keep winning. And it's, it's very unfortunate. Um, but, yeah, we don't, we don't want their, um, we also don't want their corporations because, and this is where the left wing, the alt left gets it wrong. It's not corporations. They're, they're, they're also just henchmen. They, I mean, they're the um, second to the highest rung or the, if you have the pyramid, they're, they're right under the capstone. But the real problem is international banking cartel, especially global central banks and, um, just people giving or being willing to give um, uh, everything to Israel and to help sponsor their genocide. The, the people shouldn't want it. It's time for people to wake up. Um, it's, it's just too much money, too. They, it's the amount of money, the $38 billion. Um, but what did Obama give them? Basically, um, it's a statistic that says we're giving them seven thousand dollars a minute or a second or something like that. It's absurd, but um, you know, again, people go along with it. And guess what? For all you uh, alt rights or conservatives, the type of health care that Fox News uh, lobotomizes you into not wanting is the type of health care Israel has, and. Um, they get it off of our backs. Uh, we give them a lot of free money. Oh, that's what I wanted to mention. Not only us, but the world. And now what Israel's trying to do is sue various Muslim countries for um, expelling their Jewish population or to, to whatever. At the founding of Israel, a lot of Jewish people in the Arab world and even in places like Iran, but they're trying to sue several countries for tens of billions of dollars. And surprise, surprise, they want the most money from Iran. And... Um, Unfortunately, I saw someone who said um, through some sort of legal loopholes at the UN, they could actually probably seize money from some of these countries, like frozen assets from Iran. They could probably try to tap into some of those. But that's just like when they lied to those Swiss bankers about um, Holocaust uh, uh, Jews having a lot of money in there and robbing the Swiss uh, bank out of $2 billion. All they want is free money and to dominate us politically. Uh, it's been like that for, for centuries now, but as long as we're fighting each other, I don't think it'll, it'll help, but that's it for now. God willing to see you in a future video. Thanks for watching.